Well, hello, God bless you. God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden seeing you here today. I pray that you're having a great day. I pray that things are going your way. And yes, my friends, it is that time of the week where I get to speak to you, my dear friends, those of you who are praying for me. And I want you to know I feel the prayers. Those who love Jesus Christ, who love this ministry, and who have, listen, you have communicated with me, and I thank you for the words of encouragement that you have sent, the cards, the letters, the the the, the, the hearts, the shout outs, the, the things that you, you post, the things that you say, uh, things that you do to let this preacher know, man of God, we're praying for you. We appreciate the word of God and keep on uh, keeping on, continue to fight the good fight of faith for we are in a topsy-turvy world. All kinds of things are taking place. I mean, uh, uh, every time you turn the news on, there is something uh, that was worse than the day before, whether you're talking about politics, whether you're talking about social issues, whether we're talking about this pandemic and, you know, some news uh, uh, stations that you turn to uh, the whole time is COVID, 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 take a shot, take a shot, COVID, take a shot. Have you got your shot yet? COVID, COVID, COVID. So many people have died from COVID. Have you got your shot yet? So forth and so on. All you hear, you're being constantly inundated with with this stuff. And if you're not careful, if you're not careful, if you're not careful, it will begin to affect you on a mental and spiritual level. You feel all of this stuff uh, closing in on you. You see the unrest just uh, 10 minutes down the street from the George Floyd trial. There is this shooting that takes place uh, in uh, Minnesota and the, the city. Uh, everybody's up in arms over that. And oh, my Lord, uh, 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 it's a uh, Tell you, 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 you see these things and, and personally, personally, I, I, I'm not in law enforcement. I don't have to deal with the spur of the moment, uh, issues, uh, but, uh, it's hard for me, uh, and maybe just ignorance on my part, part to see how a trained, skilled law enforcement officer can fire a gun thinking that they're firing a taser. So that's, that's beyond me, uh, my, my friends, but I do believe in due process. And I will say to everyone who is listening, if you ever get stopped and listen, I am an authority on getting stopped. If you ever get stopped by the police, participate, obey their lawful commands, whatever you do, don't resist arrest because it's not going to end well for you. It escalates everything and uh, and it can get ugly real fast. Whereas uh, throughout our country, there are hundreds of thousands of encounters with the police that takes place every day in this country, every day. And you don't hear anything about it because the overwhelming majority of them are peaceful. You get stopped, you get your ticket or you get a warning or if you're blessed, you get a break and uh, and you go on. But then there are times when it escalates and, and the news now knows how to take it. And we've made everything a uh, issue of race. We're, there are those, now listen to me, my friends, who have a vested interest, a vested interest in keeping people polarized, in pushing uh uh, being multicultural versus multiculturalism. America is made up of multi, uh, multitudes, multitudes of cultures, but there is a distinct 
culture, the American culture, which which is what gave us uh, the American. We call it the melting pot. Regardless of where you were from, what your color is, you mix into this melting pot and it formed a distinct American culture. Well, today, multiculturalism is saying, no, we're going to stay different. We're going to stay separate. I'm going to retreat to my corner. You stay in your corner. I'm not going to learn English. You don't, we're not going to learn to, to appreciate the country. We won't learn how the American game is played. We are going to be at odds. My friends, this is the formula for the death of any nation. For when a kingdom, Jesus said it, when a kingdom is divided against itself, Jesus said that kingdom cannot stand. There are people, there are people, and they don't love black people. They don't love Hispanic people. They don't love white people. They love power. There are people who have a vested interest in keeping the kingdom divided against itself. I believe this. I believe that every believer out there ought to let the main thing that we have in common be uh, our love for Jesus Christ, not our gender, not our color, not our national origin, but our mutual love for the Savior. Praise God. And then we ought to love our nation and pray for our nation. And my friends, if we do it and we call on the name of Jesus and we ask God to anoint us to walk in virtue, in character, and in holiness, what did the Lord say? If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, oh my Lord, and turn from their wicked ways, God said, I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal the land. That passage uh, is as true today as it was when King Solomon uttered those words under the unction of the Holy Spirit as God was speaking through the chronicler. Now, let me tell you something. I'm excited tonight about the word of God because I want to show you some things. I want to show you some things because saints, listen, our minds, our will to live, our ability and willingness to answer to deal with the t things that we are facing and the times, we cannot allow these things to be diminished. Our God is a God who brings strength out of weakness. Our God is a God who gives, he brings light out of darkness. He's able to turn things. And I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something. He's concerned about you and he's concerned about me. And I'm going to tell you something. We are not going to crack. You're not going to lose your mind. You're not going to, going to uh, fold like a cheap tent. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to serve the Lord with gladness. We're going to stand on the word of God. And the word of God is, is going, to, going to do what the word of God has always done. God's word is sharp. It is powerful. It's living. <laughs> it is sharper. Than, it's quick, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword. The Bible says he sent his word and healed them. The word makes the difference. And tonight we're going to talk about the word of God and how that word, even in your lowest, at your lowest point, the word of God will make you sharp. The word of God will, will, will rejuvenate your mind. The word of God will give you strength to go through, to come out victorious and to begin to just, just walk in victory, walk in victory. As you finish watching this today, whatever time it is, I want you to just look outside for a minute. Just pay attention to what's going on around you. God is moving by his spirit. It's a beautiful world. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's a beautiful day. God's been good to us. Take the time, amen, to notice the beauty of the Lord and the things that God is doing and how good the Lord has been 
to you and his being to you and he's been to me. I stepped out today at my office and just just looked and just stared in yonder's distance uh, for a minute and looked at uh, the tree line and, and saw a tree in the distance there and, and the peacefulness of it and the beauty of it. And I said, oh, God, how great thou art. Well, meet me tonight here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. (laughs) You guessed it. You know what? It's weird. I laugh at myself. But you know what? That's a blessing, too. All of us might need to learn how to do that a little bit. Because some of these people you see online, man, you want to tell them, hey, you better lighten up or you're going to die. Amen. Listen, meet me For Bible study, we are going to study the word of the Lord together. God bless.